Hello, it's Jonathan Swift here, the content director at InfoPro Digital's Insurance Vision. And I'm here with the second episode of the Insurance COVID cast in association with Insurance Post and Insurance Age. Now, it's fair to say that the insurance sector has not had the greatest few weeks in terms of its reputation. But today, I hope to put some of that uh, to, to bed uh, and show there are actually some good positive stories out there too. So I'm delighted to welcome with me today, I've got uh, Matthew from Equips Me. Anthony from Collective Benefits, and I've also got Harry from Zigo. Welcome all gentlemen. Hello. Hello. So the first question um, really, I suppose it's, uh, how do you think the insurance industry is currently um, responding to this whole COVID-19 situation? I'll start with you, Matthew. Uh, the cl classic, uh, Jonathan, it literally broke up as the, at the beginning of your question. Okay, um, so I just asked, how is the insurance industry kind of, you know, coping, uh, uh, managing itself and coping with COVID-19? How, how do you think it's doing? Uh, badly, <laughs> personally. Um, um, and whether it really is doing badly or not, it's the perception, um, which I think is, is, the, is the more dangerous thing. Um, and um, if you were to stop somebody in the street after this and say, tell me what you think about Pret or tell me what you think about your motor insurer, I think it'd be quite interesting. Um, as you know, I did a job in Japan uh, a few years ago now, and in Japan, there's still a protected status around those businesses that help rebuild it after the bomb. And I think there'll be some long memories. Um, and I don't think we have helped ourselves in any way by going on the proactive about what's not covered rather than talking about what is covered. Um, and I think we have to be very careful because, you know, when I came into insurance, I was told it's not a safety net, it's not a charity, it's for the unexpected. Um, and this morning, halfway through my team call, I had to say, sorry, sorry I've got to leave, my daughter's pulled down my washing line which is probably the most unexpected thing I'd have to say when running a business. So surely this is the time for insurance to really do something interesting. Anthony, what's your perspective on this at the moment? I, I think the sentiment is pretty much agreed there with Matthew. I look, you know, it is for the unexpected. A global pandemic that kills tens of thousands of people across Western Europe is for me the absolute description of the unknown and so there is certain policies that have simply failed to live up to their expectations you know how many businesses struggled to get business disruption payouts when they were forced to close because of social distancing and they had no income many how many people booked holidays with travel insurance in case there was some unknown reason they couldn't travel Yet Corona shuts down the travel world and they don't pay out. And, you know, I want to be honest, I, you know, we obviously uh, operate in the income protection and the accident space. We've seen people changing their policies that include pandemic cover to exclude coronavirus. People paying premium for years in case there is a pandemic and then a pandemic comes and woof, all of a sudden it's excluded, even though they paid from pandemic cover. So, you know, I think it's actually extremely disappointing. I think a lot of people have learned to say things like, we understand the customer, we care about the customer. But frankly, the second they saw outgoings coming from their pots, they have done everything in their ability to disregard the customer's need and focus 100% on themselves. And I think, you, I think the sentiment, again, is true. We're going to have some long memories about how people view insurers and how people view insurance being there when they really bloody need it so harry do you want to offer an alternative view or <laughs> <laughs> great man, harry. Great yeah. man. yeah it's, exactly how do i follow up from that um but I, I think uh perception is so important everyone says your reputation takes incredibly long time to build and it can be gone overnight um i think in the vast majority of cases the perception is is really poor and we're going to see that um, ringing true through this process. But it, it, I find it frustrating because there are opportunities right now to actually really build your reputation. Um, and there are, but unfortunately, there are a few and quite niche cases where people are actually doing things, really thinking about the customer. And I can, you know, I can 
quote the, the other people on this uh, this podcast for that. You know, that we're we're doing lots of different things, always thinking about our customers. But on the flip side of that, as a business, we personally are having an absolute fight with our insurer for our business interruption. I'm like, you know, we get this, we get this, and, and you're trying to get us on a you know complete terms and conditions. We're gonna we're gonna fight them. I'm not gonna mention any names. Um, we're gonna fight them tooth and nail, and our lawyers are enjoying that the process that they're about to go through because we see it from the other side. So I think it's a shame. It is a real shame. Um, there are so many people throughout this country who are volunteering, doing so many different things to try and support the most vulnerable people at this time. And the big institutions have got an opportunity to actually get involved with that in the way that they can. Um, and they're not doing it. And it's it's um, it's disappointing. So I'll give you an opportunity then, Harry. I mean, what, what are you as a business at Zego? What are you doing? You know, to help kind of um, you know policyholders and customers at this time of need. Well, you know, first of all, I think the first thing to say is we're having no interruption on kind of business as usual. We moved um, nearly two hundred people to remote working in twelve hours, um, which I think is testament to having a sort of system that allows that to happen. Um, I think generally our core products are all built around flexibility and flexibility is what people need right now. So whether it's a policy which looks at how much you do of something and then pays you back if you don't do enough of it, which right now is absolutely vital. So our core offerings in the private hire space, for instance, are flexible. Um, all of our delivery products are flexible. So if you do less, you pay less. Um, we've seen actually a very large rise in the amount of fleets of business that have come to us because usage basis fleets are not delivering or, or fleets are not operating depending on which sector they're in and so we're able to do that as, as kind of core offer but then on on um, additional things that we've really done we've really tried to think about the customer i know anthony's saying everyone talks about the customer well here are some kind of ways that we're actually have really been impacting them um so we put a, a policy premium pause in place if you're impacted by corona so we'll, we literally just say you don't need to be paying us for this period of time um we also have then um, created policies so people could downgrade their expensive policies. So you know, a lot of our customers are commercial users, so they have very high premiums. We basically created policies. We did it in about seven days. Um, we created policies so people could downgrade and pay less without having to take their vehicles completely off the road. And then we've we've really thought about if we've got drivers who are using are used to using their vehicles for a particular purpose how can we enable them to do more so we changed all of our policies so that if you were operating in one area we didn't want any barrier for you to operate in another so for instance if you were a private hire driver you can now go and drive for um morrison's or vice versa we kind of move these things around i mean we can't help them get more work but we just got to make sure that we can change our policies so that we can enable them to do anything they need to do at this time, both for the, the benefit of the person they're, they're working for and for their own income. So all of these things, and, and we're seeing this across the, the, the board, really. I think the insure techs here are actually making a bit of a name for themselves. I'm really pleased about. You see this from, from Flock and from Digital Risks. All of these um, you know, really interesting businesses are using technology to apply really good business principles for the best of their customer. So that's why I think it's it's almost a shame that the big businesses are not doing this because um, there's an opportunity actually to really delight your customers in the short term, which I think will have really good long-term effects. So Anthony, collective benefits, what are you doing out there to, to help? I, mean, I, I, I would say coronavirus is somewhat um, relevant to our business model, right? You know, we, we've long argued about the vulnerability of uh, gig workers, particularly around their inability to um, stabilize their income in times of sickness or inability to work. And so when your somewhat niche business problem starts becoming the front page of the news and you know the Chancellor's five o'clock presentation, I think there's a massive opportunity for us to really build on that. I think what we looked to do was think about how could we not fall foul, and it's easy to say maybe if you don't have to pay out the uh, the claims money, but how can we really put some of the challenges at heart? So um, one of the things we did very early on was when doctors were not available and a doctor's note was a qualifying criteria for some of our claims, we immediately moved it over to a 111 call note. Um, I think that helped people massively. All of a sudden, they didn't need to see a doctor. They could do an online 111 um, COVID um test whatever you want to call it and that letter was sufficient for us to pay out a claim 
Um, similarly, we, we had a lot of inbound traffic from individual freelancers who had said to us, but when's this service going to be available for us? We feel very exposed right now now and so we ran and launched a, a beta program direct to consumer for those of you who don't know we're a b2b business and we took on quite a significant number of people into a consumer product um, right at the start of this so that they had coverage for when um, COVID-19 spread more prolifically um, and we moved forward quite a few of our partner b2b launches to take place in the last three weeks we've actually been extremely busy getting people live and with coverage as quickly as possible. We also fought tooth and nail to ensure there'd be no exclusions around COVID. And so for those that qualify with the sickness cover, they are going to receive COVID coverage for uh, the need to take time off. So quite a few things in that space. We've also been um, working with some other fintechs, lobbying the government as well specifically around um, some of the protections we think the self-employed workers we speak to need from government support levels. It's been a busy time frame, but you know, when an opportunity like this arises for you to do good in society, you either do it or you don't. And I think we made the decision to participate in trying to be helpful rather than reverting and locking our doors and hopefully it'll pay dividends. But more importantly, we've now got thousands more people covered if they catch this disease and can't work. Finally, Matthew, equips me. What are you doing at the moment? Uh, quite a lot, actually. Um, <laughs> I think uh, for us, we're an SME, so we're eight, eight people. Um, luckily, we've always worked like this, so it's kind of DAU for us, but it's not for everybody else. Um, and we got together as a team very early on and decided, just like the other guys have said, we had to do something um because um i didn't want to be at the end of this stood by going oh well we could have done that couldn't we and we could have helped in some way shape or form um but we're not uh we're not a, we're not a testing laboratory we're not a bank what do we do or well, we we provide an affordable health product for people at work okay what could we do with that oh well let's give it away free so we looked at the market um and particularly businesses of our size and decided that any business with two to 20 staff can have our product for free until the 1st of August, um, which was at the time the predicted peak and everything else. Um, it means that you can add mental health support and uh, all of those sort of bits and pieces, because I think one of the things the government hasn't talked about much, Boris mentioned it on the lockdown speech, but there is a whole world of other things going wrong with people in this world. People still need physio. If I sprain my ankle playing with the kids in the garden, that's an issue, isn't it? What do I do about that? And, you know, now that everybody's at home, a benefit that actually works for them while they're at home is worth having. Flexible working and pizzas on a Friday and, and gym membership, not, not quite there at the moment, I would have said. So for us, it was let's do that as quickly as possible. Um, we have, and we've been, we've strayed, I mean, it was interesting, the debates we had as a team about the perception of an offer from insurance was very interesting. And we've strayed so far on the TCF side of, look, you could buy it, you can use it, and you don't have to pay anything. There's no catches. We're not rolling it up like a rent, you know, like a rent holiday. This is, this is something. Because if that can make a difference to just one small business at the moment, to get them through this period, then we've we've done it. We've done our job, uh, and 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 we can stand back and say, yeah, we we did something. Because you know, it's, you know, it's going to be a it's going to be a point, isn't it, where people were a bit like now people Google you to find out what, what your behaviour has been like on Facebook. There's going to come a point where people will Google you on LinkedIn or for a meeting and find out what your company did during this period. OK, well, they all sound you know, very worthwhile and, and honourable and, and very much kind of going against, I suppose, some of the bad publicity that's out there. So it's kind of good to publicise these kind of things. Before I go, I do have to ask you, uh, what, what are you missing? I mean, obviously, we're all in lockdown at the moment. Matthew, what are you, what are you missing at the moment most? Uh, obviously, it'd be nice to go for a pint um, and I don't have any football to fall asleep on in front of on a Saturday night now, uh, which my wife is really pleased about. Uh, I, I have to say, I am missing the variation in journalism, Swifty. <laughs> yeah. Um, a bit. I really, I really, 
my old magazines that I've ever read before, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Anthony? Memories are short. I think before coronavirus, there was still only one news item in the UK, and that was Brexit. I'm not actually sure which was the bigger evil at this moment in time, but uh, 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 yeah, anyway. What am I missing? I'm missing bloody going to work. I think, I, you know, I love my home, but what it would be like to get back out and have some normal routine. I, and I miss going to the gym, but, you know, I would be remiss not to say this, Swifty. I have waited 30 years as a loyal season ticket holder to see Liverpool lift the trophy of the Premier League. And I'm going to miss it. Whatever happens now, it's poisoned. And unfortunately, coronavirus has stripped the one joy I have left. And it will never give it back. So I feel that I've missed out on a 30-year opportunity to watch Liverpool lift the Premier League title. And I'm really hurt by that, in case anybody watching this wants to know. <laughs> Finally, Harry, what are you missing most about lockdown? Um, well, I think, you know, from a work side, I miss, I really do miss the kind of social interaction. You know, working from home is great. Um, it works really effectively. But I do miss just, you know, seeing all those different people day in, day out. Um but on a personal level, I'm not at home. Um, so when uh, when this all happened, I was moving my wife, who's pregnant, to her parents just in case there was a lockdown. And then I, I'm missing home. Um, I'm living with my in-laws, which uh, actually, despite all the stereotypes, is um, it's working out all right. Um, I'm, but I would like, I quite like my own bed. That's what I'd really like. And so please let me drive at some point. OK, gentlemen, well, stay safe. Uh, so I look forward to seeing you on the other side. So thank you, Matthew. Thank you, Anthony. And thank you, Harry. Until the next uh, COVID cast, it's goodbye for me. Cheerio.